How you doing, I'm Matt? And I'm Tam, his evil twin. Today I want to talk to you about the light side of CNC, the positive. Now you should go watch my video all about the dark side of CNC, the negative. Yeah, you can go watch this video if you want to. Listen, a CNC machine brings a ton of versatility to your woodworking shop. CNC is not even woodworking. Not woodworking? Come on, man. Get out of here with that noise. Listen, I'm telling you right now, if you have a table saw, a miter saw, a band saw, even a router, and you're using those power tools and call yourself a woodworker, then just because somebody dropped a CNC machine in your shop doesn't mean automatically he's not a woodworker. He's still got all the woodworking tools, but now he's got a CNC machine, he's not a woodworker. Get out of here. Man, get out of here with that negativity. Don't nobody want to hear your mess. That guy. Listen, let's get into it. Let me tell you about the positives of the CNC. This video is brought to you by 731 Woodworks. Be sure and check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans that help you create awesome projects. We also have these digital CNC files as well as physical products for you to check out. A CNC lets you create things that wouldn't necessarily be possible without one, or it would take a very long time to do the same task. I've made several mallets with this machine, including this awesome Spartan mallet. Check that out, that's beautiful. I actually carved this out of spalted tamarind using the CNC, fantastic looking mallet. I've also used this file from Two Moose Designs to create a bunch of different mallets that I was able to batch out and then put on the store, start generating some income. I'll drop a link in the description below to Two Moose Designs file. So I was able to take that file and make several different versions of the same mallet with different species of wood, and then also use some to carve our logo into. Then after making several of those, I got to thinking, why am I making a six piece mallet? It takes a lot longer to make and it's a little more complicated. So I come up with this three piece design that's very simple to make. And I have this template available so that you can make one on your own. It's three pieces, the handle and the middle section is all one piece. And then you have the two outside pieces you glue onto the handle and the middle piece. Then you just clean it up with a saw and this thing comes out fantastic. This is one of the most simple mallets I've ever made and it's still a very strong, very sturdy mallet. I've also made some logo signs out of this. I'd use some ambrosia maple and carve this beautiful ambrosia maple sign out. I'm a fan of ambrosia in case you don't know. And then also I was able to take this same Shapeco CNC and make this round soap dish for my wife. It's actually a organization dish so that she can put her soaps and stuff in by the kitchen sink. Very simple design, yet very functional. So one of the things I really enjoy making with the CNC is these catch-all trays. This is a very simple design. It's easy to program and it's easy to cut out. It doesn't take a long time to cut these out. And you can customize these in many ways. I've made some that have Don't Tread On Me with the Gatston flag snake in there. And I've also made some that are more Christian based. I Never Walk Alone with the cross and the Joshua 1-9 verse in it. I really love these. And then also just a plain catch-all tray like these, I've been able to make several of those. A CNC is also great for making custom pieces. I was able to make four custom organization trays for my new router table. Each one of these are specific to that drawer. I was able to organize my router bits, all of my router wrenches, my collets, my tools, and everything I needed from my router and router table, I keep stored right here in these organization trays. I've even made a wrench holder using the CNC for the workbench. That's one great thing about the CNC. I'm able to make a custom tray to, that fits my needs. If you like these videos, be sure to click that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it to get notified of all the new content we've got coming. The options are almost endless for a CNC. One of the light sides of CNC is that being able to add customization to your products. That's a huge upsell for a lot of people when they're in woodworking business. If you have just a product you're selling for $20 and you can add a $20 customization to it, now you've doubled your money on that product. For instance, I've heard a lot of people actually go and buy these very inexpensive cutting boards from retail stores and then they sell those with a customization of people's last names, a picture, or even their last initials, things like that. Buy the cutting board, put the customization on there and charge double, triple whatever they paid for it and make a good profit. And then you can also do that for your own products. If you're, on, if you're making cutting boards or you're making charcuterie boards and somebody wants that customization on their boards. I know when I was selling stove covers on Etsy, that was a huge thing people wanted. Always wanted customization. That's one of the reasons I bought a cry cut or cricket, cry cut, whatever it is. I bought one of those so that I could add customization stencils to people's products. That went over very well. Another light side is, other than a few minor glitches and improper programming on my part, the CNC has been a ton of fun to learn to use. I've been able to make a lot of custom products for our online store, as well as templates, things like that, that wasn't possible before. One of the main reasons you want a CNC is to add customization options. However, I think that a lot of people don't understand that the CNC is actually more profitable if you can batch things out like trays, 
mallets, anything that you can think of that you can make multiples of. It cuts down your production cost and it just helps you have more inventory at a faster pace. And to me, that, that makes it a lot more profitable than trying to set up a customization option every single time. Because if I have to set up a customization for their last name, I have to design that in the software, program everything every time, that's more time added. Where if I just have products available that are popular, that people want, then I can just batch those out and it makes more business sense to do it that way. Another life side of the CNC is, this thing is an employee of your shop for the most part. I mean, you basically pay for it up front and then it's here to work for you. It's always available to work so long as you want to. As long as you get out here and tell it what to do, it's gonna go to work. And that's huge because there's a lot of times where I don't really feel like getting out here and working. Sometimes I get a lazy bone and I just like, man, I don't feel like it today. I can come out here and tell this thing to cut out a tray or two or three and just let it go and let it work. Do I think this thing will pay for itself? Absolutely, it'll pay for itself and pay for itself quickly as long as you're willing to learn the software and, and learn the machine and make, put it to work, you have to get this thing moving. If it's not moving, it ain't making money. It's like a truck driver. You know, huh? my dad was a truck driver, my father was a truck driver. If that truck's sitting still, you're not making money. It's gotta be moving to make money. Another light side of the CNC is files. So cutrocket.com has a few that you can choose from. They're fairly limited there, but there are several that I've taken from there and you're able to take those type files or get some off of Etsy. If you're looking for carbide specific files, look for the C2D extension file. That gives you a carbide create file. If not, then you'll wind up with an SVG and you have to program all the tool paths, things like that. Once you learn the software, it's not really that big of a deal. So basically an SVG file is just an outline or a drawing of something. For instance, this digital caliper tray that I made that holds all these router bits. I was able to take, find an SVG file of a digital caliper similar to this one. Although it, didn't, it wasn't the same size as mine, I was able to tweak that file. In other words, stretch it out so that it fit my specific caliper. Then I was able to put it on this tray along with all these holes for these router bits. Once I sat down and took the time to start studying the software, everything started clicking pretty fast because it's not a complicated software. Carbide Create's not complicated. It did take me a minute to wrap my head around what was going on, but once I sat down and basically made myself learn it, I'm not designing extremely complicated things. Basically very simple stuff right now, but as I go along, I can see where I can start basically building on what I've learned so far. So that's very similar to my, our logo that I put on things that don't tread on me, that I will never walk alone. All that stuff was an SVG file that I brought into Carbide Create and then just set the tool path to, to cut that out. Listen, I know this stuff can sound very overwhelming if you've never used a CNC or never used any type of 3D or 2D modeling software. Go check out Carbide Create. It's free to download. You can play with it, use it all you want. You don't need anything other than a Mac or a PC to use it. But don't let fear hold you back if this is something you're interested in. Is it easy? I wouldn't call it easy, but it's not impossible. It's no different than learning a new joinery technique or learning how to build furniture or build a cutting board. Any of that stuff just takes practice and you just have to be willing to learn. That's all it really takes. You gotta have some want to. There's some great resources out there for learning CNC. The three main channels I've been watching is Myers Workshop, Andy Bird Builds, and Sam Craft. I'll drop a link to their channels in the description below. All of them have excellent content on CNC. Another thing, a lot of people want to get the CNC to start making products, and Carbide actually just come out with a selling guide. It's a 20-page PDF. It's free. I'll drop a link in the description. You can go check that out. That walks you through the types of CNC businesses, where to sell those products, how to price those products, how to take payments, how to ship, and even how to follow up after a sale. It's a really good guide and I think it would be very useful to you. CNC is just a lot of fun to have because you're able to really stretch your creativity on the software side and then bring it into the physical world. I think it's just, it's extremely interesting to be able to do that. It adds a lot of versatility and the main thing for me and the reason I wanted it is it brings another stream of income into the woodworking business. And I've been telling people uh, on this channel for a long time, diversify your income streams. You should have multiple streams of income coming in, especially if you have an Etsy store or an online store, or even a physical location where you're selling products. If you're able to have multiples of the same thing that you can, especially when you find what sells in your area and you're able to have a bunch of those products waiting on people, you're gonna be able to sell them right there. It's the impulse buys. Those impulse buys will drive a lot of sales. People see it, they want it, they buy it. I do it 
You do it, we all do it. You just have to find your market. And once you find that market, man, this thing will pay for itself in a hurry. A lot of people want to know what CNC to buy. And that's really a hard personal decision to make. I didn't buy this, Carbide provided this for this video series when I pitched it to them. So Chapeco offers several, if you're interested. Chapeco 4 XXL is the one I have. They have the Chapeco Pro, which adds a little more robustness to this one. And then they have the Chapeco HDM, which is the bee's knees of the Chapeco line because it has ball screws instead of the rubber belts. And it's just more robust. It's the robustestest. So this one will cut a 30 by 30 sheet of whatever you're cutting out, plywood, MDF. That's been plenty big enough for me. I've not run into any limitations on that yet. Uh, if I was making large pieces of furniture with the CNC, I can see where you could probably hit a limitation, but for signs, things like that, I've not had any limitations on, this, on the cut capacity. As far as how long the bits last, if you don't break them, they last a very long time. Even cutting hardwoods, MDF, I haven't run into any issues yet. I've had this thing for a couple, three months now, and I've cut out a lot of stuff out of hardwoods and MDF and still using the same bits I started with. One thing is for sure, the CNC has added another stream of income to our business, and that is, to me, is huge. We can make custom projects, we can make templates, and offer multiple items from one machine. I don't know of any other machine that can do that on a consistent basis where you can just kind of till it, especially once you get the files programmed like you want, you know the thickness of the material. Once you get that stuff set, it's a pretty much a set it and forget it kind of thing. So like these mallet templates, I know that I can stick a 29 by 29 sheet of half inch MDF on there and push go. Two hours later, I've got 14 mallets. You can't do that anywhere else. Now, CNC is so unique and it does that kind of thing for your business. Listen, there's a few things that I think you're probably gonna wanna have with the CNC. In other words, accessories or add-ons. Not necessarily the CNC machine itself, but tools that make your life much easier once you get a CNC. Digital calipers one, you're gonna need to know how thick that material is to the thousandth or even more. I mean, this thing is really accurate. I like having it because you can just put it on a piece of board. Now I know that that's 9.44 inches. And I can put that in the software and tell us that's how deep I want you to cut. 9.44 inches, no deeper. I got both CMT bits and Astro coated bits from Bits and Bits. Both of these are excellent. I'm putting links in the description below to these. I like the Astro coated bits better. Uh, they, they seem to cut a little bit cleaner, but the CMT bits are a little bit less expensive and they work extremely well. Like there's minimal difference between the two. Most likely the uh, marketing of the Astro coated has got me buying those for the most part. Obviously you need a computer to run it. It'll run on Mac or PC. So it doesn't matter what platform you're on. Another thing I like is this oscillating tool. I'm able to cut these parts out when it leaves these tabs. This has made my life much easier. I was trying to use a handsaw to try to cut these tabs. Uh, if you want to speed things up, that oscillating tool, that's the way to go. And I saw this on Andy Bird Builds, this star sander. This thing is awesome. This makes getting inside these trays much easier than trying to get in there with hand sander or even an orbital sander that won't fit in there. These things are great for that. The CNC has had a big impact on the shop. It's brought in another stream of income. It's an employee of the shop that I can make work when I don't feel like working. It's, made, it's allowed me to do a lot of things that I wouldn't normally have done, like make these catch-all trays, as well as these mallets that we have for sale now, as well as the mallet templates that we uh, offer to people, that we offer to people to be able to make their own mallets. Stuff like that is not possible or not easily possible without a CNC in the shop. Does it have an upfront cost? Of course it does. It's gonna have an up, a pretty good size upfront cost. It's an investment though in your business, I believe, that if you bought the machine and the bits and everything you need to get started, it's gonna pay for itself extremely quickly. MDF is relatively inexpensive. You can create signs, trays, you know, templates, all that kind of stuff out of MDF, or you can step up and use maple, walnut, that kind of, those types of woods won't break the bank and they make beautiful pieces out of wood. You can combine the two, they can contrast very well. They're just good, man, could look at me like that. They're just real good stuff, man. Okay. He's full of sunshine and rainbows, let's just be honest. There's two sides to every story and you can't just listen to his side. I've got a whole video on the negatives or the dark side of CNC, you can go check out. Click that box, that's the dark side of CNC, the side he's neglected to tell you about. Click that box, I might give you a virtual fist bump. Also, if you want to see when I first got the CNC and set it up and the troubles I had then, click that box.